Welcome big dogs. Today I'm going to show you how to size welds from an FEA analysis using an external spreadsheet program. So if you look at this interface between this rectangular tubing and this tube right here where a weld's going to go, you can see that there's some really high stresses. And those stresses aren't necessarily real stresses, they could be fake stresses. So you could add fillets here and size your welds based off of that to drive down the stresses, but really that's not a good way to do that because you don't have elastic properties of the weld material. So better way to do this is to use classical methods so how do you do that well you pull out the force loads force and moment loads at that interface and then put them in a spreadsheet program to determine the size of your welds and also evaluate the strength of your material your base material so I'm going to demonstrate how to do that today so let's go ahead and step into the spreadsheet program to see how this is done this spreadsheet determines the size of welds for rectangular tubing and also determines the margins of safety for the base metal using Omer Blodgett's method. So our inputs are the following, the length and width of the weld as depicted by this image. We also have inputs for the force of moment loads. So I pulled these loads from ANSYS. So we're just going to go ahead and copy and paste those into the input section of our spreadsheet. Once we've determined those values, we can go look at the geometrical properties and update those. So that includes the length and width of the welds and also the base metal thickness. So we'll step into a CAD program and update those values. In this case, our CAD program is space claim. So we'll go ahead and pull those values. So we'll use the cross-sectional properties of the tubing to get those values. So the width of the weld is gonna be two inches. The length of the weld is going to be three inches and the thickness is going to be a quarter of an inch. Notice we don't use the projected lengths. Why we don't use that? Because it's more conservative not to use them because they're longer. So we'll go ahead and pull those values in the spreadsheet and update this. So our width was two inches, our length was three inches, and our base metal thickness was a quarter of an inch. So we don't have to change that in this case. We also have inputs for the welding rod, including what series of welding rod we're using. So if you change that drop down box, it just updates the ultimate tensile strength of the weld material. We also use a weld safety factor of two. For a base metal, we have a drop down box for materials. In this case, I just have A36. We use a yield safety factor of 1.5 and a ultimate safety factor of two. And so that's the yield and ultimate strength of our material, A36. So I have a database here in this tab right here. So I'll add more, more materials as needed. Next, we can go to the calculations section. So the first calculation is the length, entire length of our welds around that rectangular tubing. We also have calculations for the section modulus for bending and also polar moment of inertia for torsional load calculations. And this can be obtained from Omer Blodgett's book, or you can derive them, whatever suits your needs. Next, we have a section for which the elements we calculate the loads at. So we have nine elements on the outside of the tubing. We also have a coordinate system defined. And then we can calculate our loads. Right here, we have our shear loads, and we use an average shear load. So each element experiences the same shear load for weld net calculations. And notice our units are in pounds per inch for each of these loads. We also have an axial load calculation which is based off our Z load direction. And then we have our bending calculations. So we have two bending calculations. They're a function of our section modulus. So you can see those are our inputs for the equation. Real simple equations. And we have our torsional calculations, which is a function of our polar moment of inertia and also the location at which the element's at. So we have our X and Y locations, and we can use that to calculate our shear loads at those elements. Once you determine that, then you can use superposition. So you want to superimpose all your same directional loads in the X, Y, and Z directions. So we'll sum those values. Once you've done that, you can calculate a result and use it in this equation at each element. And then you can see your units are in pounds per inch. 
Once you've done that, then you can calculate your weld size using this equation. And so I haven't derived it here, but just trust me. This is the equation that determines the leg size of your weld. So we assume that the load happens along the weld throat. So you can determine the weld throat size as a function of the leg size and get to get this equation. We also assume that the shear allowable is 0.6 times the ultimate tensile strength of the weld material. Next we have minimum weld size as calculated by the American Weldment Society. And so we'll take the maximum of those across each element and round it up to the next six, to the near sixteenth of an inch to determine our weld size. This section determines our base metal strengths. So these calculations come from the steel design by William Segee. So we determine the yield and ultimate strength of our base metal. And then we can calculate a margin by taking the maximum load across those values of the elements and determine a margin of safety. So that's how you do it. The advantage of using a spreadsheet is you can play what if. So we can go ahead and update the welding rod. We can update the thickness and see how that affects our calculations. So that's how you do your calculations using Omer logic methods in our spreadsheet. So I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. Adios.